Philip Chipping is a successful entrepreneur, the inventor of Invisible Shield, and founder of Zag, a father of four amazing kids, a lover of stories, and he is now the founder and CEO of No Wonder, K-N-O-W-O-N-D-E-R, a company that publishes stories and other fun content for kids. No Wonder's mission is to improve educational outcomes for children of all socioeconomic backgrounds by making content that is fun, accessible, and affordable. Philip, thank you for joining us here today. How are you? I am great. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and I'm, I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Well, we're just excited to hear all about your story. We know that every story is unique, even that all the children's stories, all the adult stories, everything. There's, all, there's always a special, unique path that everyone takes. So we would love to hear from you just kind of what your special story was like. What was it like for you coming out of high school um, did you go to college? Did you do some on the job training, maybe some internships? What was your after high school experience educationally like for you? Yeah, well, that's a great question. I'm not sure how much time you have, McKay, because it's kind of a long and like you said, unique story. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, everybody, I think, uh, especially the, the people like me, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up and that's a hard place to be. And, uh, and so I have some thoughts and some advice along those lines. But, um, you know, post uh, high school, I, I started doing some college. I, I went on a mission for my church to Germany. I came back and, and I started doing some more college. I worked uh, for my father. He owned the business as a, as a uh, general contractor and, and master electrician. So I started doing electrical work. And uh, for nine months was going to college, trying to figure life out. And I, I had one prevailing thought in college. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I love education. I love learning. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated with all the world around us. There's so many amazing things to learn about. And, um, and even then, I loved learning. But I had this one prevailing thought in my mind that I was sort of rebelling against the idea. Uh, I hated the idea that a piece of paper would tell me what I'm worth. I hated the idea that I had to go to college, that I had to do it their way, that I had to study the classes they wanted me to study. I knew I, 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 knew I was interested in, in entrepreneurship. I knew that I liked marketing, but I came from a, um, a family with seven kids that we didn't have a lot of money and I'm the oldest of seven. And uh, so even though my dad made a decent income, that money doesn't stretch very far when you have seven kids. And, uh, and so I was having to apply for financial help. I, I, you know, I was trying to work while going through college and that's a hard thing to try to do uh, a full-time job in college part-time or a part-time job in college full-time. And, uh, and I just kept, hating this idea that uh, they were going to tell me what I'm worth. Now, I've since learned and understand from a business owner's perspective that it's not you, your individual personal worth. It's what the job is worth. It's what, you know, the supply demand, the skill set of the labor, how, you know, uh, the job, the requirements of the job dictate how much you're going to earn, right, doing that job. But for me, it felt personal. And I think for a lot of people, it feels personal. And uh so anyway, I, I started looking outside of just uh, the traditional school system and, and uh, college as a, for a degree. And I started playing around with different entrepreneurial endeavors. And, uh, and since then, my life has been one of serial entrepreneurship with a few stints of education uh, at one point, especially because the entrepreneurship was struggling I had at one point a family of, you know, two kids, my wife and I, we were living in government assisted housing. I was working at Tahitian Noni as, as a German uh, CSR customer service representative. You know, so my hours were hard because I was up like I was there, I think at 4 a.m. or, uh, you know, to be talking to people in Germany and, uh, and providing customer service. And so that was a challenging time in our life. And I was running an eBay uh, business, selling bike parts on eBay and, and my supply chain, I was learning lessons uh, 
about supply chain problems and having a, a good solid source uh, for, for supply chains. And uh, so I, I, uh, that's that's when that's when my whole journey with Zag began. Or well, let me back up. That's when I went back to school at uh, University of Phoenix to try to get a marketing degree after hours uh, because I had a family, you know, and this was like a nighttime thing. So I went back to school to try to get a degree to try to prove that I'm worth more, um, you know, and prove that I can do more because people just don't take a look at you and the in the corporate world if you don't have a degree. And that's one of the sad. Now there are some areas I think uh, where, where you know it's more you can show the value of your work if you're a programmer, you're a coder, you're a graphic designer, there are certain skill sets that you can show your skill set and the degree isn't as important. But uh, but and anyway, so long story short, I was a year into the degree again, just barely getting done with kind of the general ed stuff, just barely getting into what I wanted to study. Uh, and that's when that's when Zach took off. That's when the invisible shield I invented that Zach took off. Business was booming and 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 it was more not because I was making enough money, but I just didn't have enough time to keep going to school that I had to, again, stop going to school. So here I am today, 46 years old, still don't have a degree. I do have, uh, I do have a uh, certificate uh, in graphic design, and that proved to be a hugely valuable thing for my, uh, for my entrepreneurial career, if you will, um, that one skill set, along with a whole lot of other skill sets. But uh, so I love education, huge proponent of it and for it, but I think there are a lot of different paths in today's world more than ever before. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's a little bit about my background in a quick little nutshell. Well, perfect. Yeah, that is really cool. And I love to hear that, that, that you, do, do, you do love education and that is important. And I feel like a lot of people that hear when we say, oh, you know, maybe college isn't the right fit for you or something like that, they're like, well, then you must not love education or you must not love right. learning or right. well, college didn't work <laughs> for me. And so that means I don't love learning. But on the contrary, right. learning is exciting. Education is exciting. We just got to find the, the right way to learn for ourselves and the right thing that's just best for us. That's cool. So you, so you ended up at two different colleges at two different times and still yeah. didn't end up earning a degree. Yeah, but you're very successful and you very and you still love education. So it's 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 just the path that was right for you. And maybe yeah. that is the path that's right for for someone else as well. You know, and knowing what I know now, I, you know, I think maybe I would have gone back and I would have buckled down and I would have chosen a, a field that was, you know, if I had gotten a degree in graphic design or I, had, you know, there there's definitely in the workplace. Um, you know, and we can we can debate whether it's appropriate or not. But in the workplace, there's this challenge, this bar that we have to overcome with having a, a degree or not. You know, and whether you get looked at. And so I think depending on what you're interested in, depending on the course you want to go, you know, I I certainly don't agree that college is the only purveyor of higher education. You know, there are a lot of ways to get educated and to keep learning and and learning is a lifelong personal endeavor it's not something that should be pushed on to us um, by by people from the outside by institutions from the outside by anybody else demanding or requiring that we have an education it, it at its most foundational level it, it needs to be something that we want and that we love otherwise we're never going to be very successful at it so yeah, i agree with you i love that it's a good uh, summary there all right, so walk me through a little bit, Philip, how both of those college or those educational experiences, also the educational experiences that you got working a bunch in between all of that education, mm -hmm. how did that lead into uh, Invisible Shield and Zach? Oh, yeah. like, I've heard of Zach. That's huge. I, I've had Invisible Shields from my phone before. <laughs> I, when I saw yeah. that, I, I couldn't believe it. That's incredible. So just kind of walk me through. I would love to hear how did all of that start and how yeah. was that maybe influenced by some of your education beforehand. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's the, that's the interesting thing. Um, 
they say that luck you know, or, or success, I can't remember the exact saying, is when luck meets preparation, right? And, uh, and people look at you and say, wow, you're an overnight success. And you're thinking in the back of your head, yeah, 10 years in the making or, or whatever, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of preparation and work. And so uh, I, I alluded to it, but my graphic design skills were a huge part of my success in Zag for a couple of reasons. Um, and uh, my, my very first introduction to graphic design was on my mission. And I was the assistant to the president and he, he, they have this tradition of making like an annual uh, uh, yearbook kind of thing with the different missionaries pictures in it and different pictures from different places in the mission and different experiences. And so I was tasked with putting together this yearbook. And so uh, that was my first introduction to Corel Draw and to some graphic design programs. And so when I came back, I thought, well, that was kind of interesting. And so I got, I got involved in a, in a certificate degree doing that. And, and I will say I was a Mac Apple user before it was cool, you know, because they were the leader in the graphic design space even clear back then. And, uh, and so, I, I started uh, just playing around with that and really enjoying that. And, and so I spent a year doing graphic design and uh, fast forward, uh, and, and this is a great story to illustrate that learning is, is not always done inside a school setting, right? You don't have to have a school to learn. So this was in 2003 or 2004, um, I was online and I got sucked in by one of these internet marketing guys. And I think the guy's name was Corey Rudel. I, I still remember it to this day, it's crazy. And he was one of these internet marketing gurus and like this long page format website that's all about his course. And it was $300 and I'm like, I don't have very much money at all. And I, but I convinced myself to do it and I bought this course. And in the mail came two thick binders, three ring binders that were like this thick each. And, and so all this material to start diving into. I honestly only, I don't remember reading more than the first page. Um, but I'll tell you what that first page said. And it was life-changing for me because I opened that thing up. I'm sure, I'm sure I read more. You know, but I, I, but I guarantee I didn't read the whole thing. Um, but I opened it up. I looked at that first page, and I, and I, and it said, "If you don't know HTML, close this course. Go learn HTML." It said you have to know HTML in, in order to to play on the internet. And they gave me a, a website, so I went to that website and I learned HTML. And I learned it well enough that when, when the opportunity for Zag came along, those two skills, along with my passion for entrepreneurship, oh, there was another book that I read. Uh, and these three things, I think, were the foundation for me. Um, and the book was called, uh, oh, I forgot about that. It's been, a, it's been a minute. It was another marketer, a famous marketer back in the day. Uh, getting everything you can out of all you've got, something along those lines. And I apologize, I can't remember the name of the, of the guy right now. Um, but just an amazing book about the foundational principles of marketing and also cre re really creative marketing. And uh, Jay Abrams, Jay Abrams, I think is the guy's name. And those three things were really a cornerstone for me that when the opportunity came up for Zag, I had by that time, uh, I had started already three or four or five other businesses. So I was familiar, I wasn't super successful at any of them. We had had some success on some and, and some failures on, on others. But by that time I had, I knew that I liked doing entrepreneurship. I knew that I liked marketing and, and, so I, I'm helping my, my father-in-law at this point start a business. He was in the car industry for a long time. And he, he did, he had an auto body shop. He did paintless dent repair. And he had looked, gone to Florida and learned how to install the clear bra. Not, not that brand specifically, but basically that film, right? And he comes home and he's like, hey, help me 
start a business, I want to, I want to cut this stuff out and provide it to dealerships. And so we started doing that and, and we were kind of a middleman for the dealerships. And I was helping him start this business and he comes into the room one day and he, and, and all of the designs for the car cuts had been designed by somebody else, but we're cutting them out on a plotter. Um, and a plotter is basically just a printer with a knife blade instead of a print head, right? And, uh, and so he comes in and he shows me his handheld Garmin GPS, one of these outdoor rugged rubber body GPS devices. And he says, check this out. And he's taken and he's hand cut, scissor cut the film to fit on his GPS. And it looked like garbage, but the light bulbs just went off in my head. And I'm like, that is amazing. That, that's something somebody's gonna want. And uh, thankfully, luckily, I had the graphic design background to know how to design that shape and how to make that shape in the computer so that it would cut clean, perfect, nice precision. And so the rest of it just went from there. I cut out a little circle and put it on my, I had a, a nice citizen watch, but the face was all scratched to that. I put the film on the face of that watch and like 99% of the scratches disappeared. I'm like, this is cool. This has potential. And, and so that's, so the very first thing I did was I hand coded an HTML website. Back in 2005, um, you could do that and you could get away with it, you know? And, uh, and I hand coded my HTML website and we, we, or I figured out what niche target demographic to go after. I found a website where they hung out. We, we did an advertisement and we earned more money on day one than the advertisement cost. And so we were off and running. I say we, because my brother had come home 10 years younger from his mission. And I told him he had to work for free for me for two months and he did it. So he was, awesome. he was a, a big help in, in getting that started at the time. So well, that's really cool. Yeah. I love to hear that you went out and learned your own skills and that those skills translated into helpful things to know during entrepreneurship, during jobs yeah. in general. Uh, that's really cool. That's really cool. I feel yeah. like a lot of kids sometimes think, oh, I have to learn everything about how to be a doctor or something or how to be a lawyer or how to code. I'd have to know everything, everything, and I have to go to school to do it. But a lot yeah. of times you can just kind of learn it on your own or buy a little uh, a little course or something and, and mm -hmm. take that. And a lot of yeah. times for a lot of skills, that's a that's a really cool thing and a good way to go. Absolutely. So that, that that's really cool. And, and then and then just the inventive spirit and the entrepreneurial spirit you have to figure that it works so well yeah. and then take it to market. Um, and is that where your current, I guess, Invisible Shield then would have led to something like no wonder was there maybe something in between that and no wonder or did you just kind of no actually actually yeah so um no wonder i i was living in england at the time uh i had uh gone to england with my wife to start zag europe limited um and we had been approached by a distributor uh in the uh from spain but ultimately decided that we wanted to just open up Europe on our own. I love Europe. My, my, my father's family is all from England, so I have a lot of family over there. I lived in Germany, so we saw that as a fun adventure and went over there and, and opened up Zag in Europe. And at that time, though, I knew that I was coming to a point in my life where I, I wanted to start the next thing. And... Uh, as great as making money is and as exciting as that is, I wanted to do something that really mattered because, uh, you know, screen protectors are great. Don't get me wrong. That's been a really fun and exciting adventure in my life. But um, I was telling my kids bedtime stories at night and uh, they were young and I was, you know, and I'm a huge proponent of reading. And one of my very, very first loves in my life is stories. And I remember when I was a kid, my dad and my grandpa telling us bedtime stories and they would make them up off the top of their head and they were crazy and funny and wild and just silly and they'd make us laugh. And 
you know, and the love and the bonding that happens um, is such a beautiful thing at story time with the, with a young child. So here I am as a, as a young dad trying to tell stories to my now three children. And, uh, and it was hard, uh, especially, you know, younger kids developmentally, they're not, a, they're not ready for chapter books. They're not ready for longer complex uh, plot lines and multiple characters and trying to keep track of all of that over, over hours and days of, of storytelling, right? And so the younger a child is, the shorter the stories need to be. Um, but when you're trying to put kids to bed, picture books aren't the best answer either because the kid needs to be sitting right by you or they wanna be looking at all the pictures. Now, I love picture books, don't get me wrong, but I was looking for like a, just a bedtime story that they could lay down they could close their eyes, they could imagine the pictures in their head and, and help them settle down, you know? And, uh, and so I started looking online and there were free resources, free stories, and they were all garbage. Um, and, and I love the fact that these people love story and they wanna write stories, but, uh, but professional writing requires some education. It requires knowing a lot about the English language, knowing a lot about grammar, and uh, and having some skill sets in, in storytelling, and and so I was having a hard time finding good resources for stories, and that's when I had the idea. I said, "Well, I know I love stories. I love writing. That's been something I've been passionate about for a long time. I know where writers hang out. I know what groups they belong to." I'm just gonna start sourcing some of these stories on my own. And that's where No Wonder was born. And so No Wonder today, again, K-N-O-W-O-N-D-E-R, know the wonder of stories, know the wonder of uh, your child's imagination of just story time, of storytelling, right? And, uh, and so today, No Wonder uh, is now almost my full-time gig. I do some real estate investing. I, I have a small-time business on the, on the side, but No Wonder is my passion. No Wonder is where my heart is. And, and I have to tell you this short sideline, um, and I don't tell you this to try to gain any sympathy, but, but up until six months ago, it wasn't my full-time gig. I, I had been sidetracked over the last 15 years after I started No Wonder. Um, I started No Wonder, let me just say this real quick. I started it as a physical magazine with 30 stories. So there was a new story for every day. Um, and moms loved it, teachers loved it, writers loved it, everybody loved it. Unfortunately, this was 2008. And, and I had about $40,000 lined up per month in monthly advertising revenue. So I'm like, okay, that's a good start. There's a lot more opportunity, but this will provide my base foundation income. And so we started, we printed 10,000 copies for three months in a row, and, and we were giving them away for free. And I'll tell you more about why I was giving it away for free in a minute. But, um, but uh, basically, we all know what happened in 2008, the economy crashed. I didn't yet have an understanding and a skill set for, for making digital products. This was the 2008. So certainly they existed by that time, but I, I was a very young and, and new entrepreneur. And, uh, and uh, we tried to convert it to a digital offering and just struggled. And uh, so no wonder has existed uh, for 15 years. But I'm only now turning back to No Wonder full time. Um, and the reason why is because over la those last 15 years, I love entrepreneurship and I've been able to do a lot of really fun things. Um, I've, I started uh, a number of companies, but in the back of my mind, in, in my heart, I kept wanting to come back to No Wonder because that's what I love. Well, in November of last year, I was diagnosed with stage four kidney cancer. And so that's kind of a wake up call. And it's kind of a, a punch in the gut, right? It's like, wow, I'm, I'm 45 years old at the time. 
and I have stage four kidney cancer and I have no idea how long I'm going to live and what do I want to do with the rest of my life? Um, and essentially that question that had plagued me for uh, 25 years, what do I want to be when I grow up? And sometimes we just have to we just have to go for it. We have to, we have to say, you know what, this is what I really want. And I, I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to make it happen. And so that's what I decided to do last November uh, is uh, I'm going to go for it. This with whatever time I have left in my life, and hopefully it's a lot of years. I'm, I'm making good progress. Thankfully, they took out my kidney. It was the size of a freaking football. Um, yeah, it's crazy how, how big that thing got. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, you know, oh, oh, and I just a month or a month and a half ago, we found out that the medication is, or my body is responding well to the medication. We're seeing some progress. Um, and so fingers crossed, hopefully it's a lot of time, but ultimately uh, I just, you know, I just decided with whatever time I have left, this is my greatest passion, kids and stories. And, um, and there are some pretty powerful connections between storytelling and, and stories and success for children in life that I kind of want to talk about that uh, goes right into how important education is and the foundation of education and learning and brain development and all those things. But but uh, yeah, that's 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 kind of where my path has has brought me. Well, that's an incredible path, and I, and I appreciate and I thank you for sharing that as well. That's really cool, yeah. really inspiring, and it's cool just to think kids and stories. That is an awesome passion. There's always going to be kids out there who need more stories, and that is yeah. really cool. So thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Uh, well, we are almost out of time here, but I did want well, to no. give you an opportunity to to shout out No Wonder a little bit. Um, where, you know, where can they find it? What's a little call to action for our viewers? Okay, well, if I can take just one minute, let me just say that yeah. uh, researchers can tell uh, if a child is going to succeed in school or struggle in school based off of one thing. And one thing, the one primary indicator, and that, that primary indicator is the size of that child's vocabulary not the speaking vocabulary, not the number of words they can say, not the number of words they can read, but the number of words they comprehend, the number of words they hear and they know the meaning of. And that's what we call the listening vocabulary. And based off of that one indicator, researchers know whether a child is going to succeed in school or not, um, or struggle. And uh, certainly there are other, you know, things, dyslexic kids or different, different challenges that children might have, but the primary indicator is that listening vocabulary. And so, especially for low socioeconomic families, um, just to put it in perspective, kids, middle class kids and upper, upper income kids have on average 13 books per child per reading level in the home. So if you have four kids, that's 52 books, right? If you have four kids with those 52 books, in, in a year, they've all gone to a new reading level, right? And if there's no overlap, you have 52 new books. That's a lot of books for these kids at home, right? Which is a beautiful thing. Uh, by comparison, low-income children have one book per 300 homes. It's that atrocious. They literally don't have reading material in their homes. And so something's gotta change. Something has to happen in order to help these kids, because if words and listening comprehension are the single prime indicator of success, we have to get more words to these low income families. And so one of our biggest initiatives is that every time somebody signs up for our digital story vault, we have hundreds of short stories, professionally written, professionally edited, professionally sourced. We have fun facts, which are short nonfiction articles about science and nature and dinosaurs and outer space and the world around us. We have classic stories like, um, like uh, Hans Christian Andersen and 
Velveteen Rabbit and all sorts of classic stories that you might find. And we have uh, uh, a whole lot of other great content that starts. Actually, our content starts when a baby is born. We have a series called Child Genius 101 that a mom can engage her brand new baby every single day for two or three years, making sure that they're giving them enough words. So our passion is anytime anybody buys one of our products, we give the same thing for free to a low income family. And so not only are you feeding your own children and, and their uh, listening vocabulary, but you're also helping make a difference in these families that don't have access to this, this kind of content. So that's why our mission is to make um, reading and, and learning fun, affordable and accessible. So uh, having said all that, you can access all of this content for, for your own family. And we've made a special deal for My Tech High. You can get 50% off of our digital story vault if you go to nowonder.com and just uh, in the checkout process, use the discount code My Tech High. And so we're passionate about learning and education. We, want, we love what you guys are doing uh, and we wanna help uh, further the education of, of all of your students. If you're not sure you want to actually buy the um, uh, buy the digital story vault at this time, that's okay. You can you can uh, opt in for a free trial period, a 14 day trial, and you'll get a really good taste of just how amazing and awesome these stories are. I think your kids will love them when you read. So just on the website, click on any one of the buttons that says free trial, or uh, use discount code MyTechHive for 50 percent off. Perfect. And again, that's no wonder at K-N-O-W-O-N-D-E-R.com. That's right. Yep. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, Philip, just the very last thoughts, I guess, just one real quick question. What your yeah. thought might be on what advice would you give to some young students who are just trying to thrive both today and, and in the future? Yeah. Um, you know, it. I promise I'm not saying this because I'm on a my tech high uh, uh, webinar, yeah. but really I think the the foundation element for all success is to love learning, just to love, just to love the exploration and the discovery. Now, having said that, we can we can learn and grow and discover across a million different avenues. Um, that does not generally lead to success in the financial world in taking care of a family. And so as much as you love to learn across the board, and I, and I recommend always be learning about something new, always, always, always be feeding your mind and your brain. Um, because one of, the, one of the interesting things about innovation, Clay Christensen talked uh, about innovation and he calls it the, the convergence of different disciplines. So when two different worlds converge that before weren't related, there, that's where you generally find innovation. And that's what happened with The Invisible Shield, right? It was a film from the car industry and the helicopter world, and, 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 and we brought it to the cell phone world, and it created a whole new category. And so keep learning. But in all of the learning, if there's one thing you're interested in a little bit more, or even if there's not, just choose an area and go deeper in that area. So it's a, like a T. You wanna be learning broadly your whole life, but you do want to specialize in one area and learn deeper in one area because that's the area where you will be able to contribute, where you will be able to have higher personal value to you know, other businesses or to other people. And that's where you'll find your your success in, um, you know, in in earning money to to pay for life. <laughs> so, I hope that helps. Yes, that is really good advice, and thank you for that. And again, thank you for sharing your thoughts and your story and your inspiration with all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm excited to 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 get this out to the to the families and kids in the My Tech High thank program you. and anyone else that may stumble uh, across it as well. Well, so, I'm excited to be a part of it. Time. Thank you. Thank you so much.